Man dies from poisonous bite. What he brought back will amaze you. Everyone, welcome back. I'm here to unravel a profound journey that began during a medical emergency, hinting at a spider's enigmatic bite, yet an enigma itself. An uncharted territory, where I found myself teetering on the precipice of existence. A desperate dash to the hospital brought a life-saving option, a surgical gamble. Sedation was the bridge to this otherworldly odyssey, a realm suspended between the corporeal and the ethereal. Picture it, a vast expanse, an ocean not of water but of souls, a kaleidoscope of humanity, the living, and those who had crossed the threshold. Purpose pulsed through their movements, weaving a tapestry of existence. Amid this cosmic congregation, curiosity became my guide. My gaze, drawn to a singular soul, a woman with the wisdom of years etched in her features. As our eyes met, smiles converged, a silent communion transcending the words we couldn't exchange. Here, layers intertwined, each a domain unto itself. Some brimmed with purpose, a cacophony of intent. Others radiated serene luminescence, a tranquil respite and beyond, a shrouded enigma, a puzzle with missing pieces. In this realm, a universal understanding flowed, where peace transcended boundaries. It echoed within me, resonated beyond, a harmonious symphony amid life's discordant notes. In this panorama, pain and sorrow, so overwhelming on this side, acquired a transient, almost insignificant role. In that tapestry, everything fell into place, even if our earthly senses could only glimpse the edges of the grand design. After spending some time there, I made the choice to return to Earth. I wanted to understand what was happening. I had a strong intention to know more. Soon, I found myself back at the hospital, but I was out of my body. There wasn't much to do there except check on my family in the waiting room. So I joined them, hanging out and listening to their conversations. I even chimed in from time to time. It's almost like when souls communicate, they can hear each other. I felt confident that a part of my family could hear and understand me. This gave me hope and optimism, especially about connecting with past family members and loved ones who have passed away. One significant takeaway from my experience is knowing that life goes on after we pass away. Our lost loved ones still exist in some form. They may not always communicate with us, and it's not like haunting or anything, but they're there. One intriguing memory that stood out was a conversation between my ex and my aunt. Later, my ex and I were discussing her mom using scripture to manipulate her. I mentioned that she had already talked to my aunt about this, advising her to learn the Bible better. My ex was stunned, insisting that I couldn't have known that conversation since it happened while I was in surgery. It was a pivotal moment. I suddenly remembered every detail of the waiting room, the chairs, the TV, the lighting. My ex was convinced that I had been out of my body, as there was no way I could have known those details otherwise. There was also another piece of evidence related to my aunt. This happened after I came out of surgery. While I was on the other side, out of my body, I realized that I wanted to stay. It felt incredible, and I didn't want to return here, where there was suffering and pain. However, I got the sense that I needed to go back. Maybe it was someone speaking to me or maybe it was just a deep understanding. I felt like I had a choice, but deep down, I knew it was best to come back. I wasn't thrilled about having to return, but I knew it was the right thing to do. I came back and saw my body. I had to get back into it, and it was like urging myself to do it. So I got back in, and when I did, I suddenly sat straight up in the hospital bed in the recovery room, startling a couple of nurses. They weren't expecting me to be awake yet. The doctors confirmed this, but they decided to bring me out to my family. Trying to make my body work was a strange experience. I was still under the influence of sedatives, and it felt like I was controlling it indirectly, like trying to operate it with chopsticks. My vision was intensely bright, almost unbearable. I could barely open my eyes. The nurses asked if I was okay, and I could hear them but couldn't see them clearly. I tried to rest my eyes, and when I closed them, I could see the room and the people in it more clearly, as if I was still half out of my body. They rolled me to the recovery room where my family was waiting. 
I must have looked quite strange to them, struggling to control my body and still partially seeing beyond the room. It's hard to explain, but that's how it felt. I had a chance to say something through me, as I wasn't sure if I'd remember later. My grandma, who had passed away a long time ago, appeared to me. She asked me to tell her daughter, my aunt in the room, not to be sad for her anymore. She didn't want her mom to cry for her at night. It's okay. She's okay now. Everything is all right. She doesn't need to be sad. She wants to see her happy, not sad. My aunt shared with me that she used to stay up many nights, crying for her mom. I never knew about this, and it was a revelation to me. Learning how much my aunt still hurt over that loss was quite impactful. I was glad to convey a message from her mom, and it brought her some peace. My aunt was quite certain that I was speaking with grandma while I was awake in the hospital bed. I was still partly out of my body, which made it possible. I could see grandma talking to me, and I also saw my other grandma and a few other people, although I don't remember all the details. My family mentioned that I had said some things about other family members, messages they wanted me to pass on. Strangely, I couldn't remember all of those details, especially with my cousin. I'm not sure why. I was in my hospital bed, talking to my family, and trying to operate my body was exhausting. At times, I would step out of my body briefly, taking a break from controlling it. Strangely, my body seemed to talk on its own, like it was on autopilot, even when I wasn't actively controlling it. I could hear myself talking, but it was as if my body was doing it independently. It's hard to explain, but it made sense to me during the experience. Now reflecting on it, I still can't fully explain how that worked, but it was part of the experience. I have retained some understanding from the other side, a sense that everything will be okay and that pain, sorrow, and life's hardships are temporary. It's our limited perspective that prevents us from seeing beyond them. I find solace in this knowledge, even when life gets tough, and I believe there's more to life than what we can see. We have much to look forward to and can find some peace in the present if we grasp this understanding. I've always considered myself a spiritual person, but having that confirmation has brought me immense peace and the ability to cope with whatever life throws my way. The depth of this knowledge that everything will be okay is something most people won't truly grasp. Even I sometimes struggle, especially when facing challenges or losing someone dear, but the effect this experience has had on me and will continue to have is profound. I know, deep in my soul, that everything is genuinely going to be okay. It's hard to put into words how this understanding has shaped me. When I lose someone now, I don't mourn them in the same way as before, filled with uncertainty. I know they still exist, and I know I will be with them again. This realization has left an indelible mark on me, making me a generally happier, more hopeful, and well-adjusted person. I carry the knowledge of the other side with me always, and it brings me solace.